so from Europe, let's all pack and go home. Let's get across to Fox Hills for the only double header of the year, the British 125 and 250 GP and an expectant crowd and the clock is running. 250 is on the line, they've all come to Fox Hills, immaculately prepared circuit again. They'll come out the gate, they'll turn down to the right, they go right, they go right again, and then the big double jump where Tortelli lost it last year and got into trouble. Up and over they go, look at the crowds of Fox Hills, Union Jacks are there, Belgian flags are there, tricklers are there, but up front there's only one man, Sebastian Tortelli, and he's going to have his work cut out today. Sebastian Tortelli, Stefan Evers goes to the front, lap number one. Stefan Everts goes very, very tight. Tortelli goes to the outside of the circuit. Then they'll go up the hill for the first time and we'll see just who's got the horsepower. But there's absolutely nothing between them. HRC Factory Works Honda. That's LM sponsored. Stefan Everts up front. Behind him is the Yunderfruit prepared Works Kawasaki Motor. Oxbow sponsored. Sebastian Tortelli. Well, you've got a pretty impartial crowd today when it comes to France versus Belgium, but wait for the 125 race and wait for the Union Jacks. Voland of America goes to third at the moment, fourth at the moment, third at the moment. There he goes. So, Belgium up front, France into second. Pitbire is there of Germany, so we really do have a mix up. We've got Belgium, we've got France, we've got Germany, and we've got the US of A. Fox Hills, the double header. It really does make for a wonderful weekend. Look at the crowd. This is the circuit where the motocross destination is going to take place in September. And if they can use the same circuit, I'm sure we're going to get 35 or 40,000 people lining Fox Hills, cheering for the British crowd, which this year must surely be a very, very strong chance of the Brits bringing home the glory. Right now, oh, a mistake. A mistake from Sebastian Tortelli. He hit a, a small stone. That threw him offline. Had a look behind him and he got a faithful of the Palmo Honda rider, Pitbira. Tortelli, he has been known just to have lapses of concentration. But I guess at 17 or 18 years of age, you can be pardoned for all those mistakes. Of course, the likes of Everts and, uh, and Pitbira have been riding for a long, long time. That's the Weltmeister seldom makes a mistake, but all of a sudden he's got Tortelli back at his back wheel again. Pirelli versus Dunlop, Honda versus Kawasaki, France versus Belgium. That's what it's all about. Whether he pulled off a tear off or whether he's waving to Stefan Evers to say thanks a lot. I somehow doubt the latter. And Evers comes straight back again. Stefan Evers, well, the crowd will love this stuff. Up the hill they go. Effort, efforts not one to crash and bang. He really doesn't seem to get too demonstrative with his riding. He'll just keep it smooth. Tortelli says, let me through. Tortelli certainly wanting to take this one all the way. Tortelli in devastating form in practice yesterday. He really looks very, very, very positive. And the crowd, of course, will get behind him because he is the rider, he's the showman. And when it comes to that, the crowd really love it. He'll take a fight all the way with Stefan Everett. Everts, of course, knows that he wants world championship points yet again. Stefan Everts comes under the very, very professional management of Dave Grant. And Dave Grant knows that he's out there to win a world title, not to win a race. So, clever management advice, and he'll know exactly what he's got to do. Look at the crowds around the circuit now as they go away from us. The track is going to get rougher and rougher. They've got a 125 Grand Prix in between, don't forget. And that certainly will churn up the circuit. But right now, LM sponsored, Honda prepared, Dave Grant managed, Stefan Everts ridden, the Honda machine, they go side by side. Stefan Everts says, you're not coming through that easily. You're only a whippersnapper. And best you just stay behind me. Well... Everett certainly is the first one to shake hands at the end of the day if he gets beaten. And he says that Tortelli certainly has the power to beat him. Whether he has the mental ability might well come into question. But in straight line speed, Tortelli will run with the best in the world. And of course, he will always attack, attack, attack. And that's what we're seeing now. This is really good stuff. Tortelli not prepared to back off one inch. And of course, neither is the world champion. That's why he is the world champion. Stefan Everts, 
Listen to the hooters. The Frenchman wants to come in and he bangs again. He'll go to the outside. Everts will come to the inside. But don't write off Stefan Everts yet. Tortelli down the hill. That Oxbow Kawasaki well prepared. And behind them, we better have a look and see exactly what is going on there. Because there is a race going on further back. What happened to Voland? That's what we need to know. What happened to Byra? What happened to Yoki Carlson? Well, we'll have to find out. The checkered flag, he's done enough. Sebastian Tortelli wins heat number one. Stefan Everts will take second. And that's unusual. I don't recall Stefan Everts having been beaten at Fox Hills since the days of Greg Albertain. But it's the trickler that's out on the circuit at the moment. But on the line, ready for the first one, two, five. This is where the Brits are riding, and this is where the Union Jacks will have to come out. They come down the start straight. Well, we've got a Yamaha on the outside. Oh, we've got a pile of bikes on the outside. A mega, mega crash on the first turn. They went to the right. I don't know if we'll get a replay of that, but certainly they went down in a big, big pile. Right now, Puzar has gone to the front, but I wonder if he knows what happened behind him. Puzo has gone to the front, Kiyote is there, Kiyote has gone to the front, so it's Kiyote, it's Puzo, then it's Cherubini, up the hill they go, Kiyote looking relaxed at the moment, oh we're going to get a replay, let's have a look, look to the right hand side of your screen, look to the right, you're going to see a big accident, oh, there they go, well, that's the end of their race, I'm quite sure, but right now it's Kiyote, it's Puzo, it's Cherubini. Where are the Brits? That's what we want to know. Where's Dobby? Where's Sagai? Where's Malin? Where's Nunn? That's the question. 30,000 people want to know. They got their air horns all ready. They got the Union Jacks ready. And there ain't no Brits up front. Well, you might have to eat your words because I can see them coming. Jorgensen is there. Sagai is there. We'll have a look as they come through towards our cameraman. But it's still Puzar, he's having himself a great, great ride at the present time. Coyote and Puzar, that's what we would expect. But let's have a look further down the field. Coyote and Puzar making the running at the moment, but it's 40 minutes of racing, don't forget. And Fox Hills is a sap-pulling track. Number 10, so Luigi Sagai, he has come into our picture. That's good to see. Luigi Sagai, where is the... Yellow Suzuki, Jorgensen is there as well, I'm sure. So Sagai has come into our frame. 23, Carl Nunn has come into our frame as well. Carl Nunn is up to fourth. Well, just as we said, there's no Brits there. He's got himself through to third already. Well, this is now emerging into an incredible race. Jorgensen going well, Sagai going well, Dobb going well, Nunn up to third. Well, this is certainly going to get the Brits motivated. They'll need every air horn that they can find at Fox Hill. The sun is coming out, the Union Jacks are coming out. Well, this is good stuff. Coyote. Puza. Carl Nunn. Look at this man, Nunn. You can't get cheekier than this. Up the hill he goes. Carl Nunn has gone to second aboard the Tim Brinton cars, Yamaha Cadbury Boost machine. He wants to do some showboating as well. Well, I don't know if he's going to have time for that. Look at the Union Jacks. Isn't this a wonderful sight? The last time they came out like this was in the motocross des nations when Malin had that incredible ride and the crowd went absolutely berserk. Well, if Carl Nunn ever ventured out of his depth, he may well be out of it at the moment, but he's not showing any signs of cracking He's getting closer and closer to Coyote all the time. He's certainly doing a great, great job of work. He's got his head down. The pressure is going to be absolutely incredible. It's his home Grand Prix. He's lying second to the current world champion. He's got 35,000 people supporting him, and he wants to take on the best in the world. Take on he has. Carl Nunn has gone to the front. Carl Nunn, Cadbury Boost, Tim Brindon Cars, Yamaha has gone to the front. The crowd will absolutely love it. The question, of course, is whether he's shown his hand just a little bit early. Coyote is a wily old fox. That Italian brain of his will surely say 
This is his home Grand Prix. Let him have his glory. Carl Nunny's having a wonderful day out. Coyote might well say, I'll just sit there until he gets tired. And when the checkered flag comes out, maybe I can do it again. But it's all about one man at the moment. And it's all about the Milden Hall flyer. Carl Nunn, he started off with a disastrous year personally. It went from bad to worse. He came back from the CAT team last year under Dave Forbes' guidance where there was a loss of motivation. He's now riding for Yamaha and with Tim Brinton's help and with Les Shepard's help, this youngster has come alive and he is now back to second. Coyote has gone back to the front and that might well be a very, very clever move from Carl Nunn. Slot into second, have a look at the back wheel of Coyote. He will certainly get the riding lesson of his life. He's a youngster that spends a lot of his time teaching other youngsters all about motocross racing up at Milden Hall at their own circuit. Spends a lot of time teaching others. Now he can learn plenty from looking at the back of Kiko Coyote's Husqvarna. And who is it going to be when the checkered flag comes down? These two certainly have gone head to head all the way around Foxfield and Cardinan comes back again. But we can see outside of the picture and you can't see. Vulleman is coming as well. Sagai is coming. Jamie Dobb, they're all there. Jorgensen's having a good ride. So don't think it's all about these two riders. Vulleman is coming at a big, big speed at the present time. Don't ride him off. Paul Malin has gone missing already. So that is a loss for Yamaha, but no loss for Yamaha at the moment. Carl Nunn, number 23 in your picture, leading the British Grand Prix at Fox Hills. First of the 125 events. And if Nunn can stay there in this heat and the second heat of the day, if he finishes in the top three or four, he could certainly move up to number five in the world championship rankings at this stage. Well, he must surely know Kevin Harris, his mechanic, must be telling him from the pit board, keep it together, keep it under control, think it through. I'm not sure what Carl Nunn must be thinking about right now. He certainly has got a lot of pressure on him today. He said earlier that in respect of Catherine, the girlfriend that was tragically killed earlier in the year, this would be the race for her. And he certainly come out firing today. Those Union Jacks must get you motivated, I'm sure. They say that through the helmets you can hear every air horn that goes off around the circuit. And that will be the motivation. Everybody egging him on. It's a long time since I've seen a British rider like this. They certainly want to see a win here today. And wouldn't that be incredible? But Coyote comes back again. Coyote comes back again. Vulleman is moving up very, very quickly as well. Don't write off the flying Frenchman. We were in his pits this morning, incredibly professionally repaired, prepared. Vulleman on the best that money can get. That is the full Rinaldi setup. That's all the bells and whistles. Vulleman has gone to second. So Coyote first. Vulleman goes to second. Carl Nunn goes to a very, very creditable third. And he knows that there's still some race distance to go. And a third would be some very, very valuable points. But of course, there's still others. Jorgensen's there. Sagai is there. Jamie Dobb is there. Carl Nunn hasn't had a wonderful run in the British Championship so far this year. But on the day that matters, it's all come together. And Coyote will take the checkered flag. A great win for him. Vulleman will take second. Where is number 23? Cadbury Boost, Tim Brinton cars. There's Carl Nunn. Well, he'll get a Union Jack and he'll be a happy chap. So Coyote takes the win. Vulleman takes the trickler and second place. But the man they all came to see, riding out of Milden Hall, Carl Nunn. Yamaha and the Union Jack. And so back to the start line. He two of the 250s. Can Tortelli do it again? Well, we can see Yamaha. We can see Suzuki colors. We can see more Yamaha colors. That surely must be Talon Voland. Talon Voland on the big Yamaha riding from the USA. We can see green in our picture. We can see red on the left. Green goes to the front. This is like playing snooker on the first turn. There we go. Sebastian Tortelli goes to the front. Stefan Everett says, no, he doesn't. 
Ah, oh, different line to the first race. Sebastian Tortelli, he goes back to third. So, Stefan Evert goes to the front, up the big hill, lap number one. Evers to the front, Volan to second, Tortelli to third. Then there's a gaggle of Hondas, which must include the Palma Rider Honda of Pitbaira, because we heard the German supporters, they've got a siren up on the bank, and you can't believe the support that they give to Pitbaira. Look at this little man on the Kawasaki. He is so incredibly fast, never stops attacking the track, attacking the competitors. Well, and there's some competitors coming through as well. Frederick Bolling is there, Werner de Witt is there. Bolly, of course, is now teammate to Stefan Everts. And he can run with the best that they are. Look at the speed that they come down that hill. Absolutely incredible. If you get head shake at that speed, you're not going to kiss it better with a band-aid for a long, long time. That will certainly give you a big surprise. Look at him going for the inside line. He set him up magnificently. Tortelli went to the outside. Volan moved across to close the door. And Tortelli went through on the inside. So the brains of a French 18-year-old as he goes through to second spot. Volan wants to come back again. Tortelli's going to ride with the Yanks next year in their home country. And I'm sure they're going to give him a torrid, torrid time. McGrath in Supercross and Emig in the outdoors. I wonder if Tortelli knows what sort of career he is embarking on. Meanwhile, Stefan Everts, he's not wild about Supercross. He says he's quite happy to just... Oh, and Talon Voland has gone down. Talon Voland has dropped it and he's battling to get that machine up. So Werner De Witt goes through, Pitbira will go through. Talon Voland just doesn't seem to get the knocks when he needs him badly. So that is Stefan Everts, the current reigning world championship, uh, world champion riding out of Belgium on the LM HRC prepared very very quick Honda indeed behind him now is Sebastian Tortelli Tortelli won the first heat and Stefan Everts took second so in the overall championship year to date they know that they are almost joined together and Everts is going to need every single point that he can get he would dearly love another world championship title but of course Tortelli wants to leave for the US of A being a 125 and a 250 world champion and he could well be on his way to stringing that together. Two firsts at Fox Hills would of course help him plenty in his quest. Well, he goes up the hill chasing him, but Everts has gone, he goes up the hill and there's no one to chase. Everts has gone missing. Out of our picture at the bottom of the hill, Everts took a detour. He's got to get himself going again and he has. So Everts is up and running again. Now he is into second place. The little Frenchman has gone to the front, and I don't know how Everts is ever going to catch him. 40 minutes of racing, they're well over half time already. That's where Everts made the mistake at the bottom of the mountain. Gets it back on the track very, very quickly, gets the power on. Up the hill he goes. All he's done is lose one place, but it's a very, very valuable one place indeed. So now Stefan Everts, the current 250 world champion, will go chasing after the little Frenchman, Sebastian Tortelli. The crowd love it because Tortelli can now get into showboating as well. Werner de Witt be pumping all of a sudden. He's got the status of a Manchester United football player. The crowd went absolutely berserk when he rode around with a Union Jack. And is it a one-off flash in the pan or can he put it together and do it again? Well, in about 25 minutes we're going to find out. He certainly has got a lot of very, very capable riders to get past. And he's got to just pick them off one at a time. He might well get past Bellametti and he might well get past Fanton. But he's got Vulliman behind him. What is this on a nice sunny Sunday at Fox Hills? He's got Bellametti in front. He's got Fanton in front. And Kevin will already have told him, you've got Vulliman right on your back bumper. And he might get past those two. But that's where his work is going to start. And of course, Vulliman will get right onto the tail of Carl Nunn. And he'll try and get the same toe to get up with the race leaders quite quickly. But are still Bellametti and Fanton are still there. It's making heavy weather of getting past them. Oh, one is out the way. So Bellametti has, has gone or he's gone in front of Bellametti. Down the hill they go. Carl Nunn must keep this tight. Close the door. Get on the gas up the hill. Big double at the top of the circuit here. Got to land right up on that, what the Americans call a plateau. They have these double jumps and these plateaus where they land. So now Carl Nunn is on his way. Past Bellametti, he's got Fanton still to pass. 
but he knows that he's got Fullerman, that incredibly quick French rider on the works, Yamaha, who saw in heat number one, he came from nowhere, worked his way through the pack, and right at the end, got himself through to a very creditable second overall. So Fullerman, more than capable of running with the best. On the inside, up the hill they go. Fenton goes to the outside, Carl Nunn goes to the inside. Certainly no shortage of horsepower on that Yamaha. This is the bike that is sponsored by Cadbury Boost and of course Tim Brinton cars from Barry St Edmunds. And a lot of that motivation has come from the quiet spoken Tim Brinton, who certainly has given this rider a lot of support since he moved across from Dave Thorpe and the CAT team of last year. Down the hill he goes yet again. He knows he's had a third in the first heat. He's got his home crowd in front of him. He knows he's also got Vulleman of France behind him. And that is a serious number of problems to overcome. But he's been there before. He knows all about pulling yourself out of a hole and pulling yourself up by the shoelaces. And he might just have to do it again today. Coyote up front. Well, this is going to be an amazing second heat. Puzar is there, Vulleman is there, Carl Nunn is there. They've got plenty of race time still to go. Never write off Kiko Kiyoti, Puzar, Vulleman. Yamaha starting to be very, very formidable again. It's just the lone Husqvarna of Kiyoti that has been so dominant in 1998. So Vulleman has gone through, but Carl Nunn is not prepared to slot in behind him. I cannot believe the cheek of this rider. He says, I don't care who you are, just get behind me. So Carl Nunn moves up another slot, gets Vulleman behind him. Those bikes are surely apples for apples. If anything, I would have thought that there's more Rinaldi bits on the Vulleman machine than there might be on the Cadbury Boost Yamaha machine. So horsepower for horsepower, I wouldn't like to predict who has got what, but Vulleman certainly not short of equipment and that bike very very professionally prepared by the french yamaha dealer out front husqvarna flying the flag Kiyoti, what a great job of work he does wonderful youngster to interview always talks well of the bike talks well about the competitors never has a bad word to say now we've got an interesting situation where jamie dob has come into the frame as well so dob has come into the picture so now it's carl nunn and james dob jamie dob on the Cat Honda, Carl Nunn knows that in British Championships, Jamie Dobb has had a very, very good year. Then he went across to the States and rode, and certainly a very, very experienced rider. Now it's all about Yamaha and Honda. Jamie Dobb in the British Grand Prix, putting it together as well. Jamie Dobb will be told by the Union Jacks also to get a move on, but it's Coyote that's taking the limelight at the present time. And a great win for Kiko Coyote. A good day he has had. Puzar must surely come in second. Puzar just around the corner. And behind him will be Carl Nunn and then Jamie Dobb. And so to the podium they go. Absolutely ecstatic applause for Carl Nunn. He's done a great, great job. Second overall, two-thirds for the day. And the overall winner, of course, Kiko Coyote.